Personal Data Protection Act, Thailand, Section 1. This is the name of the law that protects your personal data. Section 2. This law will start working one year after it is announced, except for some parts that will start working right away. Section 3. This law will work together with other laws that protect your personal data in different ways, except for some parts that will work only in some situations. Section 4. This law will not work for personal data that you collect for yourself or your family, or for personal data that is used for national security, public safety, news, art, literature, parliament, court, or credit report. This law may also not work for some other people who collect your personal data by royal decree. Section 5. This law will work for people who collect, use, or share your personal data in Thailand or outside Thailand if they offer you goods or services or monitor your behavior in Thailand. Section 6. This law explains what some words mean, such as personal data, data controller, data processor, person, committee, competent official, office, secretary general, and minister. Section 7. The Minister of Digital Economy and Society will be in charge of this law and appoint officials to enforce it. Section 8. There will be a personal data protection committee consisting of a chairperson, a vice chairperson, five directors by position, nine honorary directors, and a secretary general. The committee will be appointed by the cabinet based on the selection by a selection committee. Section 9. There will be a selection committee consisting of eight members appointed by the prime minister, the president of the parliament, the ombudsman, and the National Human Rights Commission. The selection committee will select suitable candidates for the chairperson and honorary directors and submit their names to the cabinet for appointment. Section 10. The selection committee will have duties and powers to select candidates for the chairperson and honorary directors based on their qualifications and absence of prohibited characteristics. The candidates must agree to be nominated and appointed. The names of the appointed chairperson and honorary directors will be announced in the Government Gazette. Section 11. The chairperson and honorary directors must have qualifications such as being Thai nationals, having knowledge and experience in relevant fields, and not having prohibited characteristics such as being bankrupt, incompetent, convicted of crimes, dismissed from service, holding political positions, etc. Section 12. The chairperson and honorary directors will hold office for a term of four years and may be reappointed for one more term. If a new chairperson or honorary director has not been appointed after the expiration of the term, the outgoing one will continue to perform duties until a new one assumes office. Section 13. The chairperson and honorary directors will leave office upon death, resignation, dismissal by the cabinet, or disqualification. If they leave office before the expiration of the term, a new one will be appointed for the remaining term unless it is less than 90 days. If the chairperson leaves office, the vice chairperson will temporarily perform duties until a new one is appointed. Section 14. A meeting of the committee will require a quorum of at least half of all members. The chairperson will preside over the meeting or delegate to the vice chairperson or another member. Decisions will be made by majority vote with each member having one vote. In case of equal votes, the chairperson will have an additional vote. Meetings may be conducted by electronic means or other means as prescribed by the committee. Section 15. Any member who has a direct or indirect interest in the matter being considered in the meeting must inform the committee and refrain from attending the meeting on that matter. Section 16. The committee will have duties and powers such as making a plan on how to protect your personal data, promoting and supporting government agencies and private sector in doing activities according to the plan, setting rules or guidelines for the operation of personal data protection, issuing notifications or rules for the execution of this law, announcing and establishing criteria for sending or transferring your personal data to a foreign country, announcing and establishing guidance for the protection of your personal data as guidelines for the people who collect, use, or share your personal data, recommending the cabinet on making or changing laws or rules related to the protection of your personal data, providing advice or consultancy on any operation for the protection of your personal data, interpreting and making rulings on the issues arising from the enforcement of this law, promoting and supporting learning skills and understanding on the protection of your personal data among the public, promoting and supporting research for the development of technology related to the protection of your personal data, and performing any other acts as prescribed by this law or other laws. Section 17. The chairperson, the vice chairperson, and committee will receive a meeting allowance and other benefits according to the rules prescribed by the cabinet. The chairperson of the subcommittees, the subcommittees, the chairperson of the expert committee and expert committee appointed by the committee will receive a meeting allowance and other benefits according to the rules prescribed by the committee with approval of the Ministry of Finance. Section 18. The committee will have the power to appoint subcommittees for considering or performing any act as prescribed by the committee. The meeting of the subcommittee will follow the same rules as the meeting of the committee. Section 19. The people who collect, use, or share your personal data must not do so without your consent, unless it is allowed by this law or any other laws. The request for your consent must be clear and written or electronic, unless it cannot be done by its nature. The request for your consent must also inform you of the purpose of the collection, use, or sharing of your personal data and must be separate from other matters. 
The request for your consent must use clear and plain language and must not deceive or mislead you. The people who collect, use, or share your personal data must also make sure that you give your consent freely and not because of any condition or pressure. You can withdraw your consent at any time as easily as giving it, unless there is a law or a contract that prevents you from doing so. If you withdraw your consent, it will not affect the collection, use, or sharing of your personal data that you have already given consent legally. If the withdrawal of consent will affect you in any way, the people who collect, use, or share your personal data must inform you of the consequences. The request for your consent that is not according to these rules will have no effect on you and will not allow the people who collect, use, or share your personal data to do so. Section 20. If you are a minor who is not married or has no legal capacity, the request for your consent must be made as follows. If you are not allowed to act alone by law, the request for your consent must also get consent from your parents or guardians. If you are below the age of 10 years, the request for your consent must only get consent from your parents or guardians. If you are incompetent, the request for your consent must get consent from your custodian who has the power to act on your behalf. If you are quasi-incompetent, the request for your consent must get consent from your curator who has the power to act on your behalf. These rules also apply to the withdrawal of consent, the notice given to you, the exercise of rights, the complaint, and any other acts under this law for you who are a minor, an incompetent or quasi-incompetent person. Section 21. The people who collect, use, or share your personal data must do so according to the purpose that they informed you before or when they collected it. They must not do so in a different way from the purpose that they informed you before unless they inform you of the new purpose and get your consent before doing so or it is allowed by this law or any other laws. Section 22. The people who collect your personal data must limit it to what is necessary for their lawful purpose. Section 23. When collecting your personal data, the people who collect it must inform you before or when they collect it of the following details, unless you already know them the purpose of the collection, use, or sharing of your personal data, the case where you must provide your personal data because a law or a contract or where it is necessary to provide your personal data for entering into a contract, the possible effect if you do not provide such personal data, the personal data to be collected and how long they will keep it, the categories of persons or entities to whom they may share your personal data, the information, address, and contact details of them and their representatives or data protection officers, your rights under this law such as withdrawing consent, accessing and obtaining copy of your personal data. Section 24. The people who collect your personal data must not do so without your consent, unless it is for one of these reasons, it is for making historical documents or archives or for research or statistics that are for public interest and have measures to protect your rights and freedoms, it is for preventing or stopping a danger to your or someone else's life, body or health, it is necessary for a contract that you are a party to or for taking steps at your request before entering into a contract, it is necessary for a task that they do in the public interest or with official authority. It is necessary for there or someone else's legitimate interests, except where your rights and freedoms are more important. It is necessary for following a law that they are subject to. Section 25. The people who collect your personal data from someone else, not from you directly, must not do so without your consent, unless it is the personal data that they can collect without your consent under Section 24 or Section 26. The people who collect your personal data from someone else must also inform you of the collection of your personal data from someone else without delay and get your consent. They must also inform you of the new purpose and details of the collection if they are different from what they informed you before. They can only skip these steps if you already know them or if telling you would be impossible or would interfere with the use or sharing of your personal data, especially for research purposes. In that case, they must take measures to protect your rights, freedoms and interests. They must also keep your personal data confidential if they get it from their duty or profession. To inform you of the collection of your personal data from someone else, they must do so within 30 days after they collect it unless they use it to communicate with you or share it with someone else. In that case, they must inform you at the time of the first communication or before the first sharing. Section 26. The people who collect your personal data must not collect some types of personal data that are sensitive or may affect you in a similar way, such as your race, religion, political opinions, sexual behavior, criminal records, health data, disability, trade union information, genetic data, biometric data, etc., without your clear consent, unless it is for one of these reasons, it is to prevent or stop a danger to your or someone else's life, body or health when you cannot give consent. It is done by non-profit organizations with political, religious, philosophical, or trade union purposes for their members or people who regularly contact them and they do not share your personal data outside their organizations. It is information that you make public with your clear consent. It is necessary for legal claims. It is necessary for following a law to achieve purposes such as medical care, public health, employment protection, social security, national health security, social welfare road accident protection, social protection. It is for scientific, historical, or statistic research purposes or other public interest purposes that are necessary and have measures to protect your rights and freedoms. It is for substantial public interest with measures to protect your rights and freedoms. 
Biometric data means personal data that comes from using technology related to your physical or behavioral features that can identify you from others. The collection of personal data relating to criminal records must be done under the control of authorized officials by law or with data protection measures by the committee. Section 27. The people who collect your personal data must not use or share it without your consent, unless it is the personal data that they can collect without your consent under Section 24 or Section 26. The people who get your personal data as a result of the sharing must not use or share it for any other purpose than the one that they told the people who collect your personal data. The people who collect your personal data must keep a record of their use or sharing in the record under Section 39. Section 28. If the people who collect or process your personal data send or transfer it to another country or international organization, that country or organization must have good enough data protection standards and follow the rules for the protection of personal data by the committee. They can only skip this rule if it is for one of these reasons, it is for following a law, it is with your consent and you know that the country or organization does not have good enough data protection standards, it is necessary for a contract that you are a party to or for taking steps at your request before entering into a contract, it is for following the contract between the people who collect or process your personal data and someone else for your benefit, it is to prevent or stop a danger to your or someone else's life, body, or health when you cannot give consent, it is necessary for doing activities in relation to substantial public interest. If there is a problem with the data protection standards of the country or organization, the committee will decide. The committee may review its decision if there is new evidence that the country or organization has improved its data protection standards. Section 29. If the people who collect or process your personal data in Thailand have a personal data protection policy for sending or transferring your personal data to another people who collect or process your personal data in another country who are in the same business group or undertaking group as them, and if their policy has been checked and approved by the office, they can send or transfer your personal data to another country according to their policy and skip the rule in section 28. The personal data protection policy, the meaning of the same business group or undertaking group, and the rules and methods for checking and approving the policy will be set and announced by the committee. If there is no decision by the committee in Section 28 or no personal data protection policy in this section, the people who collect or process your personal data may send or transfer your personal data to another country if they provide suitable protection measures that enable you to exercise your rights and have effective legal remedies according to the rules and methods set and announced by the committee. Section 30. You have the right to ask for and get a copy of your personal data that is under the responsibility of the people who collect it, or to ask them to tell you how they got your personal data without your consent. The people who collect your personal data must do as you ask unless it is allowed by law or court order and it would affect the rights and freedoms of others. If they reject your request, they must record their rejection and reasons in the record under Section 39. When you make a request, and they cannot reject it, they must do it without delay but not more than 30 days after they get your request. The committee may set rules for asking for and getting a copy of your personal data, including extending the time limit or other rules as appropriate. Section 31. You have the right to receive your personal data from the people who collect it. The people who collect it must arrange it to be in a format that is readable or commonly used by automatic tools or equipment and can be used or shared by automated means. You also have the right to ask the people who collect it to send or transfer your personal data in such formats to other people who collect it. Ask them to stop using or sharing your personal data if you think that they are doing so without following this law or other laws. Ask them to delete or destroy your personal data or make it unidentifiable if you think that they are keeping it longer than necessary or without a legal reason. Ask them to suspend the use of your personal data if you think that it is not accurate, complete, or up-to-date or if you are checking whether they are using or sharing it legally. Ask them to inform other people who collect or process your personal data of your requests under this section unless it is impossible or requires too much effort. Section 32. You have the right to object to the collection, use, or sharing of your personal data at any time if you think that they are doing so for their or someone else's legitimate interests and your rights and freedoms are more important. The people who collect your personal data must consider your objection and stop doing so unless they can prove that they have a more important reason to do so or that they need to do so for legal claims. Section 33. You have the right to object to the use of your personal data for direct marketing at any time. The people who collect your personal data must stop doing so when they receive your objection. They must also inform you before using your personal data for direct marketing for the first time and every time they share it with someone else for direct marketing. They must also give you an easy way to object to such use. Section 34. You have the right to object to the use of your personal data for scientific, historical, or statistic research purposes at any time unless such use is necessary for public interest. Section 35. You have the right not to be subject to a decision based solely on automated processing, including profiling, which produces legal effects on you or affects you significantly, unless it is allowed by law or a contract that you are a party to or with your consent. In that case, the people who collect your personal data must provide suitable measures to protect your rights and freedoms and legitimate interests such as giving you a way to express your opinion, challenge the decision, or request human intervention. Section 36. 
you have the right to complain to the committee if you think that the collection, use, or sharing of your personal data violates this law or affects your rights. The complaint must be in writing and contain details of the violation or effect and evidence. The committee will consider your complaint and inform you of the result within a reasonable time. The committee may set rules and procedures for making complaints. Section 37. You have the right to bring a lawsuit against the people who collect or process your personal data if they violate this law or do not follow the order of the committee and cause damage to you. You can also ask a foundation, association, or other nonprofit organization that works for personal data protection to bring a lawsuit on your behalf if you give them written consent. The lawsuit must be filed within one year from the date you know or should know of the violation or damage or from the date the committee informs you of the result of your complaint. The court may order the people who collect or process your personal data to stop violating this law or pay compensation for your damage. The court may also order them to pay punitive damages up to twice the amount of actual damage if they violate this law intentionally or with gross negligence. Section 38. The people who collect or process your personal data must put in place security measures to prevent loss, unauthorized access, destruction, alteration, or disclosure of your personal data. The security measures must be suitable for the type and nature of your personal data and the risks of the collection or processing. The security measures must also follow the standards and guidelines set by the committee. Section 39. The people who collect or process your personal data must keep a record of their collection, use, or sharing of your personal data that does not require your consent under Section 24 or Section 26 or that they reject your request under Section 30. The record must contain details such as the purpose, type, source, and destination of your personal data, the date and time of the collection, use, or sharing, the reasons for not requiring your consent or rejecting your request, and the security measures. The record must be kept for at least five years from the date of the collection, use, or sharing or until they stop collecting or processing your personal data. The record must be submitted to the committee or the competent official when requested. Section 40. The people who collect or process your personal data must appoint a data protection officer if they are a public authority or if their main activities involve regular and systematic monitoring of your personal data on a large scale or involve collecting or processing sensitive personal data on a large scale. The data protection officer must have knowledge and experience in personal data protection and perform duties such as advising and monitoring the compliance with this law and other laws related to personal data protection, cooperating with the committee or the competent official, and being a contact point for you and the committee or the competent official on matters related to personal data protection. The people who collect or process your personal data must inform the office of the name and contact details of their data protection officer and any changes to them. Section 41. The people who collect or process your personal data must report any breach of your personal data to the office without delay and within 72 hours after becoming aware of it unless it is unlikely to pose a risk to your rights and freedoms. The report must contain details such as the nature and cause of the breach, the type and number of your personal data affected, the possible consequences and measures taken to deal with the breach, and the name and contact details of their data protection officer or other contact point. If they cannot report within 72 hours, they must explain the reasons for the delay. They must also inform you of the breach without delay if it is likely to pose a high risk to your rights and freedoms unless it is allowed by law or court order or they have taken measures to ensure that the high risk will not happen or it requires too much effort. In that case, they must inform you by public announcement or other appropriate means. Section 42. The people who process your personal data on behalf of the people who collect it must follow their instructions in this law. They must not use or share your personal data for their own purposes or other purposes unless they get consent from the people who collect it. They must also put in place security measures under Section 38 and cooperate with them in complying with this law. They must not appoint another person to process your personal data on their behalf without consent from the people who collect it. If they appoint another person to process your personal data on their behalf, they must make sure that such person follows their instructions in this law as well. Section 43. The people who collect your personal data may set rules for self-regulation in relation to personal data protection for themselves or for their group of undertakings or affiliated businesses. The rules for self-regulation must be in accordance with this law and other laws related to personal data protection and must be approved by the committee. The rules for self-regulation may include the scope, objectives, principles, measures, mechanisms, monitoring, evaluation, and improvement of personal data protection. The people who collect your personal data must inform the office of their rules for self-regulation and any changes to them and must follow them strictly. The committee may revoke the approval of the rules for self-regulation if they are not followed or not effective. Section 44. The people who collect your personal data must cooperate with the committee or the competent official in performing their duties under this law. They must not obstruct, resist, or disobey the order or request of the committee or the competent official or provide false information to them. They must also allow the committee or the competent official to enter their premises or inspect their documents or equipment related to personal data protection when requested. Section 45. The office will be established as a legal entity to perform administrative tasks for the committee and to promote and support personal data protection. 
The office will have duties and powers such as preparing a master plan and budget for personal data protection, providing advice and consultancy on personal data protection, conducting research and development on personal data protection, providing training and education on personal data protection, receiving complaints and conducting preliminary investigations on personal data protection violations, reviewing and certifying personal data protection policies for sending or transferring personal data to another country, monitoring and evaluating the implementation of this law and other laws related to personal data protection, cooperating with other agencies or organizations on personal data protection, and performing any other tasks as assigned by the committee or as prescribed by this law or other laws. Section 46. The office will have a secretary general who is appointed by the cabinet from the persons who have knowledge, skills, and experience in personal data protection or related fields. The secretary general will have duties and powers such as being a director and secretary of the committee, supervising and managing the work of the office, appointing officials and employees of the office, issuing regulations of the office, representing the office in legal matters, and performing any other tasks as assigned by the committee or as prescribed by this law or other laws. Section 47. The secretary general will hold office for a term of four years and may be reappointed but not more than two terms. The secretary general will vacate office upon death, resignation, being dismissed by the cabinet due to negligence, misconduct, or incapability, being disqualified or having prohibited characteristics under Section 11. Section 48. The office will have officials who are appointed by the secretary general to perform tasks under this law. The officials will have duties and powers such as entering premises or inspecting documents or equipment related to personal data protection when authorized by the committee or the secretary general, seizing or attaching documents or equipment related to personal data protection when authorized by a court order, requesting information or evidence related to personal data protection from any person when authorized by the committee or the secretary general, and performing any other tasks as assigned by the committee, the secretary general, or as prescribed by this law or other laws. Section 49. The officials must show their identity cards to the relevant persons before performing their tasks under this law. The identity cards will be in the form prescribed by the committee. Section 50. The office will have employees who are appointed by the Secretary General to perform administrative tasks for the office. The employees will be under the law governing labor protection, labor relations, social security, workers' compensation, and other laws related to labor. Section 51. The office will have income from the government budget, fees, charges, fines, donations, and other sources. The office will spend its income for its operation and management and report its income and expenditure to the committee and the cabinet every year. Section 52. The office will have a fund for personal data protection to support its operation and management. The fund will consist of money from the government budget, fees, charges, fines, donations, and other sources. The fund will be used for purposes such as promoting and supporting personal data protection activities, providing compensation for personal data protection violations, providing financial assistance or subsidies for personal data protection, and investing for the benefit of the fund. The committee will set rules and procedures for the management and use of the fund. Section 53. The office will prepare an annual report on its operation and management and submit it to the committee and the cabinet within 120 days after the end of each fiscal year. The annual report will contain information such as the performance of the office, the income and expenditure of the office and the fund, the problems and obstacles in personal data protection, and the recommendations for personal data protection improvement. The office will also publish the annual report for public information. Section 54. The office will prepare financial statements and accounts for each fiscal year and submit them to the auditor within 150 days after the end of each fiscal year. The auditor will audit and express opinions on the financial statements and accounts of the office and submit them to the committee and the cabinet within 180 days after the end of each fiscal year. The auditor's report will also be published for public information. Section 55. The committee or the secretary general may appoint an expert committee to perform tasks such as studying, researching, analyzing, or giving opinions on personal data protection matters as assigned by the committee or the secretary general. The expert committee will consist of experts who have knowledge, skills, and experience in personal data protection or related fields. The expert committee will have duties and powers such as issuing orders to protect data subjects whose rights to personal data protection are violated, imposing administrative fines for personal data protection violations, mediating disputes related to personal data protection, and performing any other tasks as assigned by the committee or the secretary general or as prescribed by this law or other laws. Section 56. The expert committee will hold office for a term of two years and may be reappointed but not more than two terms. The expert committee will vacate office upon death, resignation, being dismissed by the committee or the secretary general due to negligence, misconduct, or incapability, being disqualified or having prohibited characteristics under Section 11. Section 57. At a meeting of the expert committee, the presence of not less than one half of all members is required to constitute a quorum. The chairperson of the expert committee will preside over the meeting. In case of equal votes, the chairperson of the meeting will have an additional vote as a casting vote. 
the meetings of the expert committee may be undertaken by electronic means or any other means as prescribed by the committee. Section 58. Any member of the expert committee who has a direct or indirect interest in the matter being considered in the meeting must inform the expert committee of such interest before the meeting and must not attend the meeting that is considering such matter. Section 59. The expert committee may appoint subcommittees to consider or perform any tasks as assigned by the expert committee. The provisions of Section 57 and Section 58 will apply to the meetings of the subcommittees as well. Section 60. The chairperson of the expert committee, the expert committee, the chairperson of the subcommittees, and the subcommittees will receive a meeting allowance and other benefits as prescribed by the committee with approval of the Ministry of Finance. Section 61. The data subject who is affected by the violation of this law or whose rights to personal data protection are violated may file a complaint with the expert committee within one year from the date he or she knows or should know of the violation or damage. The complaint must be in writing and contain details of the violation or damage and evidence. The expert committee will consider the complaint and inform the data subject and the people who collect or process his or her personal data of the result within a reasonable time. The expert committee may set rules and procedures for making complaints. Section 62. If the expert committee finds that there is a violation of this law or that the rights to personal data protection of the data subject are violated, it may issue an order to protect the data subject such as ordering the people who collect or process his or her personal data to stop violating this law or to do or not do any act related to his or her personal data. The order must be in writing and state the reasons and evidence for it. The order must be delivered to the data subject and the people who collect or process his or her personal data within seven days from the date of issuance. The order will be effective from the date it is received by them unless otherwise specified in the order. Section 63. The people who collect or process personal data must comply with the order of the expert committee under Section 62 within the time specified in the order. If they disagree with the order, they may appeal to the administrative court within 30 days from the date they receive the order. The appeal will not suspend the enforcement of the order unless otherwise ordered by the administrative court. Section 64. If there is a dispute between a data subject and a person who collects or processes his or her personal data regarding personal data protection, any party may request mediation by the expert committee. The expert committee will appoint one or more mediators to mediate the dispute. The mediation must be completed within 60 days from the date of the request unless the expert committee extends the time limit. The mediation will be confidential and the mediator and the parties must not disclose any information related to the mediation unless agreed by the parties or required by law. If the mediation is successful, the mediator will prepare a settlement agreement and submit it to the expert committee for approval. The settlement agreement will be binding on the parties and enforceable as a court judgment. If the mediation fails, the expert committee will inform the parties of the result and their right to file a lawsuit or a complaint under this law. Section 65. The expert committee may impose an administrative fine on a person who collects or processes personal data if he or she violates this law or does not comply with the order of the expert committee under Section 62. The administrative fine will not exceed 5 million baht and will be calculated based on the type, nature, and severity of the violation, the damage caused to the data subject, and the benefit gained by the violator. The expert committee will issue a written order stating the reasons and evidence for imposing the administrative fine and deliver it to the violator within seven days from the date of issuance. The violator must pay the administrative fine within 30 days from the date he or she receives the order. If he or she disagrees with the order, he or she may appeal to the administrative court within 30 days from the date he or she receives the order. The appeal will not suspend the payment of the administrative fine unless otherwise ordered by the administrative court. Section 66. The money from the administrative fines under Section 65 will be remitted to the fund under Section 52. Section 67. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law intentionally or with gross negligence and causes damage to a data subject, he or she will be liable for compensation for such damage. If there are two or more persons who are jointly liable for such damage, they will be jointly and severally liable for compensation. If a person who processes personal data on behalf of a person who collects it violates this law intentionally or with gross negligence and causes damage to a data subject, both of them will be jointly and severally liable for compensation unless they can prove that they are not responsible for such violation. Section 68. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law and causes damage to a data subject, the data subject may file a class action lawsuit against him or her on behalf of himself or herself and other data subjects who have the same or similar rights and interests. The class action lawsuit will follow the rules and procedures under the law governing class action lawsuits. Section 69. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law and causes damage to many data subjects, the committee may file a lawsuit against him or her on behalf of the data subjects who give written consent to the committee. The committee may also request the court to order interim measures or provisional remedies to protect the rights and interests of the data subjects before or during the trial. The committee may settle the dispute with the consent of the data subjects who give written consent to the committee. The settlement will be binding on the parties and enforceable as a court judgment.
Section 70. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law and causes damage to many data subjects, a foundation, association, or other nonprofit organization that works for personal data protection may file a lawsuit against him or her on behalf of the data subjects who give written consent to such foundation, association, or organization. The foundation, association, or organization may also request the court to order interim measures or provisional remedies to protect the rights and interests of the data subjects before or during the trial. The foundation, association, or organization may settle the dispute with the consent of the data subjects who give written consent to such foundation, association, or organization. The settlement will be binding on the parties and enforceable as a court judgment. Section 71. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law and causes damage to a data subject, the data subject may request the committee to provide compensation from the fund under Section 52. The committee will consider the request and inform the data subject of the result within a reasonable time. The committee may set rules and procedures for requesting compensation. Section 72. If the committee provides compensation to a data subject under Section 71, the committee will have the right to claim reimbursement from the person who collects or processes personal data who caused the damage. The committee may also request the court to order interim measures or provisional remedies to secure the reimbursement before or during the trial. Section 73. If a person who collects or processes personal data violates this law and affects the rights and freedoms of many data subjects, the committee may file a lawsuit against him or her to stop such violation or to do or not do any act related to personal data protection. The committee may also request the court to order interim measures or provisional remedies to protect the rights and freedoms of the data subjects before or during the trial. Section 74. The competent official will have the power to enter any premises or inspect any documents or equipment related to personal data protection when authorized by the committee or the secretary general and when there is a reasonable ground to suspect that there is a violation of this law. The competent official must show his or her identity card and a written authorization to the owner or occupier of the premises or the person in charge of the documents or equipment before entering or inspecting. The competent official must also exercise his or her power in accordance with the rules and procedures prescribed by the committee. Section 75. The competent official will have the power to seize or attach any documents or equipment related to personal data protection when authorized by a court order and when there is a reasonable ground to believe that they are evidence of a violation of this law. The competent official must exercise his or her power in accordance with the rules and procedures prescribed by the committee. Section 76. Any person who obstructs, resists, or disobeys the order or request of the committee or the competent official under this law or provides false information to them will be liable to imprisonment for not more than six months or a fine of not more than one million baht or both. Section 77. Any person who collects or processes personal data without the consent of the data subject or in violation of this law will be liable to imprisonment for not more than one year or a fine of not more than two million baht or both. Section 78. Any person who uses or discloses personal data without the consent of the data subject or in violation of this law will be liable to imprisonment for not more than two years or a fine of not more than four million baht or both. Section 79. Any person who sends or transfers personal data to a foreign country without the consent of the data subject or in violation of this law will be liable to imprisonment for not more than two years or a fine of not more than four million baht or both. Section 80. Any person who collects, uses, discloses, sends, or transfers personal data pertaining to racial, ethnic origin, political opinions, cult, religious or philosophical beliefs, sexual behavior, criminal records, health data, disability, trade union information, genetic data, biometric data, or any other data which may affect the data subject in the same manner as prescribed by the committee without the explicit consent of the data subject or in violation of this law will be liable to imprisonment for not more than three years or a fine of not more than six million baht or both. Section 81. Any person who fails to comply with the order of the expert committee under Section 62 will be liable to imprisonment for not more than six months or a fine of not more than one million baht or both. Section 82. Any person who fails to comply with the rules for self-regulation under Section 43 will be liable to a fine of not more than 500,000 baht. Section 83. Any person who fails to inform the office of his or her rules for self-regulation under Section 43 will be liable to a fine of not more than 100,000 baht. Section 84. Any person who fails to appoint a data protection officer under Section 40 will be liable to a fine of not more than 500,000 baht. Section 85. Any person who fails to inform the office of his or her data protection officer under Section 40 will be liable to a fine of not more than 100,000 baht. Section 86. Any person who fails to keep a record under Section 39 will be liable to a fine of not more than 500,000 baht. Section 87. If a person who collects or processes personal data commits an offense under this law by the order, instruction, or act of another person, such other person will be liable to the same punishment as the offender unless he or she can prove that he or she has taken reasonable care to prevent such offense. Section 88. 
If a juristic person commits an offense under this law, the managing director, manager, or any person responsible for the operation of such juristic person will be liable to the same punishment as the offender unless he or she can prove that he or she has taken reasonable care to prevent such offense. Section 89. The committee or the secretary general may file a lawsuit against a person who commits an offense under this law on behalf of the public prosecutor with the consent of the attorney general. The committee or the secretary general may also request the court to order interim measures or provisional remedies to protect the rights and interests of the data subjects before or during the trial. Section 90. The competent official will have the power to settle an offense under this law if it is a petty offense and the offender agrees to pay a fine within 30 days from the date of receiving a notice of settlement. The settlement will terminate the criminal proceedings against the offender. The competent official may set rules and procedures for settling offenses under this law. Section 91. The committee will have the power to compound an offense under this law if it is not a petty offense and the offender agrees to pay a fine within 30 days from the date of receiving a notice of compounding. The compounding will terminate the criminal proceedings against the offender. The committee may set rules and procedures for compounding offenses under this law. Section 92. The money from the fines under Section 90 and Section 91 will be remitted to the fund under Section 52. Section 93. The committee may issue a notification prescribing administrative penalties for minor violations of this law such as warnings, reprimands, or orders to rectify or improve personal data protection practices. The committee may set rules and procedures for imposing administrative penalties under this law. Section 94. Any person who is dissatisfied with an order or an act of the committee, the secretary general, or the competent official under this law may appeal to the administrative court within 30 days from the date he or she knows or should know of such order or act. The appeal will not suspend the enforcement of such order or act unless otherwise ordered by the administrative court. Section 95. The minister may issue ministerial regulations for carrying out this law. The ministerial regulations will come into force after being published in the Government Gazette. Section 96. The Prime Minister and the Minister of Digital Economy and Society will be in charge of this law and have the power to issue notifications for carrying out this law. The notifications will come into force after being published in the Government Gazette.